The 2023 F1 season ended just as it started, with Red Bull dominating it. To be fair, that's just how most of the season has gone, but the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix was never really about what was happening at the front of the field, but had everything to do with what was happening behind it. You know, after you between those two and in the end Norris turned. There were battles up and down the grid, but the most interesting one was that of Mercedes and Ferrari, with the Scuderia in a strong position to take second in the Constructors' Championship, well, that is if you don't have the strategy team that the Prancing Horse do. Mercedes also rode their luck in particular with Sergio Perez, who let's just say was fuming with the stewards, and it looks like he's now in hot water over those comments. Mercedes have had a pretty disappointing season, and Lewis has probably done the best that he could, but after Abu Dhabi, he had some rather scathing words for his team, and if you're a Mercedes fan, it does not look good. Want to know how Ferrari managed to ruin their chances of second in the championship? Let's just say Carlos was not impressed, and how much trouble is Checo really in? Stick around to the end to hear what Lewis had to say, well, maybe don't if you're a Mercedes fan. It was only fitting the Red Bull won the last race of the season, and let's be honest, Max dominated it again. It's hard to think that we will ever see a more dominant driver and car combination than the RB19 and Max Verstappen. 1,000 laps led is insane and deserves all the credit. Now, we're not trying to Max fanboy, but rather give credit as it's due. The real question was who was going to finish second in the championship and take the extra $10 million home and as much momentum as they could into the 2024 season. While there was little doubt who was going to win the race, the subplot of Mercedes trying to hold off Ferrari in the constructors' standings provided plenty of entertainment. He's got the position at the moment, mid-corner though. Leclerc started second and Russell fourth, while Hamilton was 11th on the grid with Ferrari's Carlos Sainz in 16th after both of them endured disappointing early qualifying exits. The starting grid meant it was going to be interesting, but to add fuel to the fire, the optimum strategy would be a two-stopper. All of this added to a cracking up and down race with it being almost impossible to predict who would finish second. And what's more, it got slightly more complex as the race went on. Russell made a poor start and lost a place to Norris, but regained fourth on lap 11 by overtaking taking Piastri, who had been passed by his McLaren teammate. The Mercedes driver would then advance to third after a slow McLaren pit stop allowed him to pass Norris, with Leclerc comfortably holding on to second ahead. The added layer of intrigue would be an unaccounted for Sergio Perez who managed to split Charles and Russell. Suddenly, Ferrari could smell blood and thought now was their chance. However, Ferrari's hopes of a helping hand were ruined when Perez carelessly drove into Norris when overtaking the McLaren, earning a five-second penalty which would prove crucial at the end. As you can imagine, Imagine, Norris was not impressed. I tried to let the guy go and he crashed into me. I don't know what he was doing, a bit careless to be honest, said Norris. Naturally, Perez had a very different version of events defending his overtake. You've got to remember when you dive from behind, when you go onto the brakes late, you're not in full control of the car. Lando knew I was there, he decided to turn in. We made contact tire to tire like I said. He cut the corner, he gained time. I just feel in my honest opinion it was just a racing instant, said Perez. The five-second penalty ultimately didn't really affect Red Bull or even Checo, but had a massive implication on Ferrari as Perez passed Russell with four laps remaining. But even with the help of a fast-thinking Leclerc, who slowed down to give the Red Bull a slipstream and allow it through, he couldn't open up an all-important five-second gap to the Mercedes. Now, Charles did have a rather interesting plan to try and get Ferrari into second, but he would have needed the impossible to happen, as in order for Charles to get it right, then Charles could have only been 0.2 seconds ahead of Russell. Otherwise, he would have been within the five second penalty range and given Perez second place. Great thinking from Charles but risky in the end. Maybe Ferrari should listen to Charles for strategy as he may be onto something. However, the real question today was around Sainz's strategy, as Russell staying within a place of Leclerc kept Mercedes a point ahead of Ferrari, who held the tiebreaker by virtue of Sainz's win in Singapore, but Hamilton outperforming Sainz gave the Silver Arrows an extra cushion. Well done to Hamilton, but Ferrari need to think about their strategy as hoping for a safety car was pretty ridiculous. They could have even given Sainz a shot on the softs 10 laps before. In the end, it was another race to forget for Hamilton, who hasn't had many great races this year, with the biggest highlight being a pole position in Hungary, and that's about it. As Sergio Perez gets by, up to third on the road for that five-second... 
when you have high standards like Hamilton, this season must be hard to swallow. His race appeared to be ruined by a dented front wing after he drove into the back of Pierre Gasly's Alpine after the Frenchman locked up on lap 15. The incident ultimately appeared to do little damage, but Hamilton appeared to fail to maximize the potential Russell was shown that the Mercedes had as he passed Fernando Alonso before the Aston Martin immediately hit back, with Hamilton claiming that his former teammate had brake tested him after retaking the place. You would think that the end of the season would be a welcome relief for Hamilton as the Mercedes man looked defeated after the race and his comments were cause for concern, but more on that later. Firstly, let's chat about Perez and his instant. It seemed to divide the paddock with Martin not convinced it was a penalty and Anthony thinking it was. Naomi didn't really get off the fence about it, maybe it would have been a good weekend to have Bernie in. So what do you think? Was it a 5 second penalty? Let us know whether it was or wasn't. Perez was not happy about it and had some pretty brutal words for the stewards. During the race he said, they have been very bad this year, but this is a joke. That really was a joke. Perez's race engineer, Hugo Bird, agreed with Perez. He said, I don't know what they were looking at. He wasn't done there, as after the race in his interview, he had another dig at the stewards. So far it looks like, I don't know if the one stop was possible, something we have to look at and review. Other than that, just happy with the whole team, they've done a tremendous job. We deserved a lot more today, I think the stewards were very poor today in my opinion, Perez said. His team boss agreed with him and felt that the stewards may have got it wrong. You don't deserve a penalty for that, if anything it looked like a racing incident. But Perez could be in trouble for his comments on radio, with the FIA summoning him to the stewards room for an alleged breach of the international sporting code, said Horner. Now, Perez was initially summoned to the stewards' office, but like most things that happened at the end of the season, the stewards gave a long statement reminding Perez of his conduct. It's not like they would be able to do anything after the race anyway. There was far too much riding on a potential new penalty being handed to the Mexican driver. Either that, or they didn't want to enrage Toto by taking away Mercedes' second place. Speaking of Mercedes, all Mercedes fans must be happy with this season being over and hoping that the next season will be a lot better than this season just gone. And the best way to get them excited is for their current drivers to show their excitement for the 2024 car. Well, that's not exactly what Hamilton did, with the Mercedes man rather pessimistic about the 2024 season. A despondent Hamilton was struggling to see the positives after Sunday's race when he was asked if he takes any satisfaction away from the result. Responding, not particularly. He was then asked what he can take away from the season as a whole, to which the 38-year-old Briton replied, not too much. It's not been a great year in general. There's not been a lot to take from the year in general. The fact I survived it? Probably that's about it. Hamilton, who finished third in the Drivers' Championship behind the Red Bull duo, was then pressed on whether he believes Mercedes can challenge Red Bull for the title in 2024. After a notably long pause, he said, at this moment, I don't really know. For Red Bull to win by 17 seconds, and they haven't even developed their car since August, is definitely a concern. We have learned a lot about the car, and it's just down to the team now. They know what they need to do. Whether or not we will get there, we will see. What do you think? Will Mercedes be competitive?